Hello, and welcome to Middleborough High School course selection. We're so glad you could join us. I'm Steve Goldman, one of the school counselors, and I work with the students whose last names are N through Z. Today, the other school counselors and I will be spending the next 20 to 30 minutes explaining how to select your and request your courses for the 2021-22 academic school year. Regardless of what your high school plans are and what school you're planning on attending next year, we request that everyone select courses for us just in case your plans change. You all received a copy of the eighth grade course selection book. It's the transition workshop that we're doing. On the first page, when you open it up, you're gonna find a letter from the school counseling department at Middleborough High School, which just kind of summarized what we're gonna go over in the workbook today. Before we get into course selection, let's talk a little bit about how to access information from our department. You can always find out the latest information from the school counseling website. And the link right there, www.middleborough.k12.ma.us slash MHS will bring you to the website. And then you just click on About Us, Departments, and the School Counseling Department, and you will find all the information that you need, including a calendar of events that are coming up. In addition, you can get us on Twitter. Let's talk a little bit about academics. Every final grade that you receive in the classes you take in high school are assigned a value from zero to four. Um, when these, uh, these points are averaged together, it creates what we call a grade point average. That, and the class rank is simply taking all of the grade point averages for the members of the class of 2025 and placing them in order from highest to lowest. The scale below shows you how we weight the courses. So why do we do this? All high schools do this. And the reason for that is colleges request it when you're applying. If you're going to into the military, they request it. Trade schools. And even employers ask to see a copy of what we call your high school transcript, which has all of your grades uh, and, your, uh, and your grade point average. We get requests from employers daily asking for a high school transcript. So it doesn't matter what you do in high school, regardless of what your plans are after high school. A lot of people tell us, I'm not going to college. It doesn't matter. It does matter because employers are going to ask us to send that to you. We get requests going back 50 years um, for people that graduated 50 years ago and they, the employers want to see what kind of student you were. And if you're a finalist for a job and the other, and you interviewed just as well as the person, the other person that's a finalist, but you got C's and D's and F's and the other person got A's and B's, it's going to be a very easy choice for the employer. So it matters what you do while you're in high school. Just work to your potential. If you're a C student, you'd be the best C student you can possibly be. Let's move on to the different levels of courses that we offer. We offer three different levels of co co courses. College preparatory, which literally is what it says, prepares you for college. If you took all college preparatory courses and you did well in them, you will get into a competitive college. For those students who are advanced in certain subject areas, we have honors courses. These courses move at a much faster pace. There's less repetition in the classroom. There's more independent thinking on the student's part. Um, and they're probably not gonna have as many multiple choice and fill in the blank tests. You're probably gonna have more essay related tests to really explain how you came to your conclusions and understanding the material. Um, now you you know you can so if you are strong in the humanities maybe you want to look at social studies and English classes at the honors level if that's not your thing and you're strong in the math and sciences maybe you want to it take honors courses in the math and sciences so the best your best bet would be to talk to your teachers and find out um, what they would recommend based on the performance that you've you've had in your classes advanced placement courses and there's only one advanced placement course that um, first year students are able to take at Middleborough High School and uh, that is AP Human Geography. Um, that is a college level course. So you will need to be, if you need to be prepared to be working at a much more rigorous pace 
uh, in the advanced placement course. And then you would have to take the advanced placement exam at the end of the school year. Um, so th that is uh, something that you absolutely would want to discuss with a teacher and a school counselor before you sign up for it. Um, for those students out there and, and parents that are thinking about college right now, um, a lot the question that we get all the time as school counselors is how many advanced placement courses or honors courses do I need to take in order to get into a good college? Good is a relative term. What might be good for one person might be a terrible choice for another person. The answer to that question is as many as is appropriate. In some cases, that might be zero. If you're not an AP student, you're not. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're not a good student. It doesn't mean you won't get into a competitive college. The whole trick with selecting your courses is balance. You want to make sure that you are challenging yourself in the areas you're capable of handling that challenge and not causing yourself more stress taking an advanced level course and getting a whole bunch of low grades in those courses because that's not showing uh, appropriate um, selection of your courses. Um, if you took all honors and AP courses and you got C's across the board, that's not sending a positive message to colleges. They're saying, you know, are you clearly uh, looking at yourself and evaluating yourself um, and your ability as a student and do the colleges want to take a risk um, on a student like that who may be overwhelmed um, and possibly fail and drop out. And colleges are run like businesses and they do not like to report dropout rates. So talk with the people that have seen you perform, talk with your parents, and really take the advice that you're getting and pick the courses appropriately. Let's talk a little bit about graduation requirements. In order to get a diploma from Middleborough High School, you need to earn 20 credits of English. That means you need to have English every year, so four years of English. You need three, a minimum of three years of math. That's 15 credits. Um, if you are planning on attending a competitive four-year college, you'll need a fourth year of math. Um, if you are in what they call an educational proficiency plan for MCAS, you would also need a fourth year of math. Uh, science, you need three years of a lab science. Um, our freshmen all take biology. Um, and then usually it's chemistry and then either environmental science or anatomy and physiology. All freshmen will take world history too. And then you also would, and then you would need to take US one and US two sophomore and junior years. So that would be a total of 15 credits. In order to graduate from Middleborough High School, you need a minimum of two years of a world language. And at Middleborough, we offer Spanish. French, and we're one of only two public schools in Massachusetts that offer Russian. Um, and now you can take up to four years of a language if you would like to. Um, competitive colleges require a minimum of two. There may be some that require or recommend three or require or recommend four, but there's not many that, that do. But to get a diploma from Middleborough, you need a minimum of two years of the same language. We also require you to earn five credits in technology. Most of you will be taking computer programming and design essentials. That is an intro course that will be a prerequisite to take pretty much any other computer course that we offer at the high school. Um, that's a two and a half credit course, and then you would have to take another two and a half credits in a variety of different uh, technology areas. We also have a requirement for fine and performing arts. And that would include the, I don't know, the art courses, the theater courses, or the music courses. Um, if you have an interest in, in theater, that's great. We, can, we have plenty of different theater uh, programs that you could take. If you play an instrument, you could join our band. Or if you sing, you could join our chorus. Uh, if you prefer to draw or paint, you could, you could take an art class. Uh, or you can mix and match to get a total of the five credits uh, that you need to graduate. Every year you need to be enrolled in a physical education course. All freshmen will be taking personal fitness. And then as you move on through sophomore, junior, and senior year, you'll have a variety of courses that you can choose from the physical education department. And then you would need a total of 41 elective courses to reach the minimum of 136 credits 
needed to graduate from Middleborough High School. Um, if you had a full schedule for four years and passed all your courses, that would be 160 credits. So you can see there's plenty of room in there to get those credits that you need to be able to receive your high school diploma. In addition to the high school diploma, I'm sorry, to the graduation requirements for the classes, you also need to earn 24 hours in community service work, and you need to pass the ELA Mathematics and Biology MCAS. Now I'm going to introduce Catherine Leahy, who is a school counselor intern in our office this year, and she's going to talk about your four-year plan. Thank you, Steve. Hello, everyone. Um, so we're going to go over what your schedule might look like for freshman year. So you'll be taking English 1. Um, that'll be a semester long. Um, and then you'll be taking World History 2, which would be a semester long. And then you're either going to be taking Algebra 1 or Geometry. Um, so that will be a full semester every single day, along with semester two every other day. So that one will be worth, um, your math will be worth 7.5 credits, um, whereas English and world history will be worth five credits. So that'll be three, that'll fulfill three blocks of the day. And then the fourth block, you could have um, your start of your world language, or it could be one of your art or tech classes. Um, and then that will be semester one. And then semester two will look like that every other day math class, along with a uh, semester long of biology, um, a gym class, and then a tech class, and maybe some other electives. Moving on, um, sophomore year, it'll look like having English two. Um, then you'll move to United States history one from world history to um, finish or begin or start your um, world language or finish it off. Um, your second science class will be chemistry. Um, and then you'll have either geometry if you took algebra one last year or the freshman year um, and then, or algebra two if you took geometry freshman year. Moving along to junior year, you'll have English three um, United States History 2, uh, another gym class, PE. Um, your sciences could either be anatomy, environmental science, or physics, and then your math would be algebra 2 or pre-calc. And then you would have more room for more electives junior year. And then come senior year, you would take your English 4 um, class, another math class if you're planning on going to a four-year college, um, and then another PE class, and then you will have electives that you can take or also internship. Um, so we're gonna scroll down and I'm going to introduce um, Ash Barron, the school counselor for students last names F through M. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so I'm gonna go over that course selection informational sheet that we created for you so that you'll know exactly what classes you need to pick from when you go on to Aspen to pick your classes. So we provided this information for you with required courses that you're gonna pick as well as the electives available to you for freshman year. There's a worksheet um, that, you know, that you'll have in your packet as well where you can write down the courses. So when you go to sit to to type in um, and select your courses in Aspen, you'll already have written it all down, so it'll be less confusing and you'll just know what you're gonna do right then. Um, this sheet also talks about you know, the different levels again, as Mr. Goldman said, college prep prepares you for four-year college, so all of our core classes do that. Honors and AP are more rigorous, so you do have to you know, be driven um, and willing to take responsibility for your education in the sense that if it's not going well, or if it's you know presenting a challenge that you're not used to, that you persevere, you stay after school, you talk to your counselor, you talk to your teachers, and you you know change it up and figure out you know a plan with with us or them how you can make it work for yourself. Um, it's not how smart you are. It's not that oh you're smart you're going to be an honors or AP. It's that you're going to work hard and you're committed to that. 
So make sure you think about that because in high school, every class has homework. Um, every class requires you to ha have assignments completed. Um, honors and AP are for those students that are gonna do that and then, then some. So they're gonna take the extra step to learn on their own and to get help when they need it. I mean, everybody should do that, but it definitely is applicable when you're on honors and advanced placement classes. So through all that, you're gonna pick a minimum of 40 credits of class, which fills everybody's complete schedule. And you're gonna pick four to eight alternate electives. And Mrs. Byrne, after this, is gonna go over how to do all of that. But you wanna make sure that you pick 40 credits of class because that's how much is gonna fill your schedule. If you pick less than that, your school counselor is gonna have to plug in an elective for you that you may not want, but they don't know because you didn't pick any electives or you didn't pick enough electives. We want you to um, pick alternates so that if the electives you did pick aren't available, you can you know, get hopefully one of the alternates and not one that you didn't want. When you look at um, the sheet in your booklet, you'll see all of the courses listed for freshmen. So if you look at English language arts, you'll see that the required choice is English one. So you can select CP, which is college prep, or honors, which is, says H. Then when you go down to mathematics, you're gonna have that in your uh, Aspen account by our department head of math, Mrs. Miles. She, is good, she uses the data and your courses from middle school to determine if you are going to be in honors or college prep. Um, and you know which course you took in middle school dictates if you're gonna be in algebra or geometry. So those will be imported for you. Um, and then the other, things you will pick will be next down is your history and social studies. Every freshman takes world history too, college prep or honors. You're gonna pick the level for that. Um, you're gonna take physical education, which for all freshmen is fitness for life. Then you'll look up at the science area and everyone's gonna take biology their freshman year. Um, so you're gonna pick college prep or honors. There is the biology MCAS as well freshman year. So this course is extra important. Um, you wanna make sure you pay extra good attention um, because you will be taking an MCAS in that subject. If you take it, if you have biology in your schedule first semester, you will take the MCAS in February. If you take it second semester, you will take the MCAS in June so that you will be taking it right after you have the class. Um, skipping down to world languages, that's another requirement. You'll be taking either French one, Spanish one, or Russian one. Um, then when we go to technology, you are going to be preloaded in your Aspen account for computer programming and design, as this is a required class for freshmen. It's a, um, a prerequisite for most technology classes as well. Um, so those are all the, the courses that are required and that you're going to choose or will be in your selections already. But then when we go back to look at the um, the, court, the subjects again, we can go over the electives. So electives are classes that you don't have to take specifically. They're just the classes that should interest you um, or might be in an area that you wanna maybe major in or pursue as a career. So it's a good way to try out a bunch of different types of classes if you're not sure. So if you look back in the English, English language arts under electives, there's gender studies, Gothic and horror literature, journalism, literature of diversity, and mythology. So those all have to do with English language arts. So you wanna have some interest in that area and the topic. There's no math electives, um, but if you go down to history and social sciences, you'll see that AP human geography. So that is technically an elective because it doesn't meet a graduation requirement. However, it's different than the other electives because it's 7.5 credits, it's an all year course, so all of first semester and every other day, second semester, and you take an exam at the end, the advanced placement exam. Um, so this class is very rigorous, it's like a college level class, and so it's only gonna be for you know a certain, certain freshman student that's willing to put in the work um, as much as needed. Then when we go back to science, there's one elective option. It's called observational astronomy. Um, and then the next box down is project lead the way. So these are electives as well. You don't have to pick any of these. If you do want to get into the project lead the way sequence, which goes through senior year, you need to start freshman year. So you would need to pick computer 
um, science essentials, either college prep or honors, introduction to engineering design, either college prep or honors, or principles of biomedical science, college prep or honors. So each of these classes is a five credit class. So you must pick one of these if you do want to pursue the project lead the way sequence in this area. So this is not required. A lot of freshmen last year, um, we said this and they weren't paying attention and they ended up taking it and they, some of them didn't mean to and they think that they're kicking themselves now. So make sure you're paying attention when you're picking your classes and you pick what you, what you want when they're electives. When you go down to world languages, you'll see electives in cultural perspectives and Spanish in the, work, in the workforce. And then there's gonna be some virtual electives options next year, which will be American Sign Language and World Language for Traveling Abroad. So those are two new ones that we're offering virtually next year. In technology, um, there's a bunch of different options for you aside from the one that's required. There's Digital Imaging One, mobile application. So mobile means phone. And it's funny that most people, kids don't know that. So it's phone apps. Um, Technology Systems One and Television Video Production One with Mr. Pelletier. So he has um, a program there at the middle school. You don't have to have been in the program to take it at high school, um, but you wanna be interested in television video production. The last box, you'll see all the fine and performing arts electives. And there are so many options for you to take to fulfill that requirement. Um, and you can, if you love, you know, the fine and performing arts, you can exceed that requirement. Same for technology. So there's an intensive art course for people that are into hands-on art called Art Foundation, Art and Design Foundations. And it's a college prep level class. So it's a, you know, it's a um, five credit semester long class. So you want to take this class if you want to take studio art later, if you maybe want to take an AP art, or you're just really interested and love doing art because it's a whole semester art class. Art of theater is the introduction to theater um, where you're learning about you know, theater, but it doesn't mean that you have to be in this class to be in productions at our school. You can be in the speech and theater workshop. You can try out for plays and musicals after school, but this is if you're interested in theater, um, you would take that elective. Creating and responding to art is sort of an intro to art, um, hands-on art. It's less intensive than art and design foundations. So if you like art, you know, but you don't love it or you don't want to take a semester of it, you probably want to take creating and responding to art. Um, when you, you can try out for concert choir sophomore year. Um, and then you can do Sachem Singers, which is our, like our chorus um, for grades nine through 12 starting freshman year. Um, we have a creating 2D to 3D class now, an art class. Um, the digital imaging class I mentioned in technology, however, that can be used towards an art, art, art requirement as well. Um, you can't use it for both. You'd have to use it either for tech or for art, but that is an option. There's also fundamentals of music, um, impact, the role of music in society, and then if you're if you play an instrument you can join the band um, if you are in the band now you aren't automatically in the band at the high school a lot of kids forget to pick it or they think it automatically transfers over but you need to select if you want to be in the band um, there's an option of taking it half year if that works better with your schedule and all the other courses you want to take and that's offered at the honors or college prep level there's a class in music business music history and literature and then in the theater department, Shakespeare and Modern Times. And then there's a sound and engineering and audio production course, and then a string orchestra. So if the instrument you play is a string instrument for the orchestra, you may pick that. Um, there's also a half year option at the college prep level or an honors and college prep option for full year classes. So it's a lot of information, um, but that's why you have it in front of you. And that's why we're explaining it. And you can go over it with your current teachers to ask about levels. If you, you know, have have um, if you're, you know, don't really know what to do, you can talk to your school counselors there. Um, if it's Miss Foley or Mrs. Moriarty, you can talk to them, and you can talk to parents' guardians. Try to see what level you should be taking. But like I said, you want to make sure if you're picking an honors level that you're willing to put in the extra effort if needed. And now um, I think that sums up the course selection worksheet.
and we're going to turn it over to Mrs. Byrne. Oh, that, yep, and that's the page you can write everything down that I was talking about. We can keep scrolling down, and we'll go to um, Mrs. Byrne, and she's the counselor for last names A through E, and she's going to go over instructions for selecting your courses in Aspen. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm Mrs. Byrne, um, and I have students with last names that start with A through E. Um, I'm just going to go over the Aspen, the technical um, side of this presentation. So um, for the next few pages uh, of, of your booklet, um, we have instructions for selecting your courses in Aspen. So on the first page, it says um, that you, you want to log into your Aspen account. So for those of you who have not logged into your Aspen account in a while, or you've forgotten your password, um, and you try to get into it and you get disabled, um, please make sure you contact, and it's right here, Katie um, Goodine, okay? So you wanna email her, kgoodine at the middleborough.k12.ma.us email address, and she will reactivate your account, okay? So once you're into Aspen, you're into your Aspen account, you're going to um, click on select my info. The next step is to, on the side, you're going to click on, to, on um, the requests tab. And then you're gonna to begin to um, start to request your courses, okay? So um, if we wanna just scroll down through this, and the important thing about this um, piece of the booklet is that it's in the booklet that you have in your hands today and that you guys, um, if you have any trouble um, after this presentation, you know, over um, next weekend or, or next week, um, when you're looking at your, you know, choosing your courses with your family or your guardians, um, that you um, have the instructions right here, okay? So if you forget how to do it, the instructions are right here. Okay, and then um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to Aspen um, in a second, but I just wanna remind you that if you guys have any questions at all throughout this process, you have two very um, capable, awesome guidance counselors over there, um, Ms. Moriarty and Mrs. Foley, and they are there to help you and guide you through this process, okay? But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the Aspen page. Um, I have a fake student set up. The student is called I'm a student. Um, and I'm going to go there right now. So I'm, um, I'm logged in. So this is as if you're logged into your Aspen account, okay? And your name is going to be up here at the top under Middleborough Public Schools. And what you're going to do, the first step, which is in that booklet, is click on my info here at the top. Once you have done that, you are going to click on the side tab requests if it's not already open. It won't likely be, so you'll have to click on requests. So once there, you're going to see, um, it's gonna say Middleborough High School, we are Sagems, and it's gonna say future, um, it's gonna say future freshman class of 2025. So it's going to be a set of instructions that you can read through with all the requirements that you need to take as a freshman um, and all of the instruction for selecting your courses here in this Aspen portal. Um, please note that even if you are intending to go to Bristol Plymouth, um, VOTAC or Bristol Aggie or um, a private school, Everybody, every single person, all 265 students in your class need to select their courses for next year. If you end up going to that school um, and not to Middleborough High School, you, um, we will simply take you out of our system and, um, and out of our schedule, okay? But if you do um, end up changing your mind and you come to MHS, we want to, we want you to have a schedule that you chose. Okay. Not one that we chose for you because, um, because there's nothing in our system. Okay. So please read through this. It will indicate that you need to have a full schedule, which is 40 credits. Okay. So I'm going to just scroll up a little bit here and I'm going to show you that 
right here it says credits where I'm hovering. And right now it says 0.0, .0 because I haven't selected any courses yet. When you guys open up your portal, your credits are, are not going to be zero. They're actually going to be higher than that, okay? Because your math course is already going to be in there, um, it's which is worth 7.5 credits. You're going to have your gym class, which is fit for life, which is two and a half credits. So that's 10. And then you'll also have your computer class, which is another two and a half credits. So 12 and a half. And then some of you, if you have an IEP, um, you may and you are going to be taking um, learning strategies next year, then you may have an additional five or 10 credits in your schedule for those learning strategies or links learning strategies courses. Okay. So, but when you get to the end of scheduling, you should have 40 right here. So let's scroll down. And below the instructions is each um, core subject area, okay? So we've got English, math, social studies, science, and world language. Those are your core classes. So if you click on English, okay, this, this example here is, is for our current freshmen. So that's why it says English 2. But you guys are going to, when you open your portal, it's going to say, English one, okay? And you're gonna choose English one honors or English one CP, not both, just one. So I'm gonna choose English two CP, okay? And in order to save my selection, I'm gonna click on okay. So then you can see because the course number is 022 and English two, okay, shows up right here your math selection is being chosen for you. So that is going to show right here. Social studies, okay, it's gonna give you some instructions up at the top and you're gonna choose US one or, or uh, honors or, I'm sorry, not US one, you're gonna choose world history two, um, CP or honors. Okay, so on and so forth. So, so for your science, you're gonna choose your level and for your world language, you're gonna choose your, um, your either choosing Russian, French, or Spanish one, okay? Your gym is gonna already be selected for you. And then below that, you've got electives. So this is where you need to um, think about what you're choosing. Please choose courses that you are interested in. Don't choose courses based on what your friends are choosing because as you know, you and your friends may have a lot in common, but you may not like the same types of electives. Um, for instance, um, I cannot draw at all, and I, I don't, I can't do art. And so if my best friend was taking a couple of art courses and I can't draw, I don't wanna sign up for the same art courses that my friend is taking. I might want to, because I kind of like theater, so I might want to sign up for a theater class, and she can go to her art class, and and we can go our separate ways for that class because those interests um, are different. So when I click on electives, <clears throat> you can see that there are lots of electives to choose from. So this is the first page of electives. It goes from gender studies. Um, all the way down. And then to get to the next page of electives, you're going to click on this arrow, or you could click on the drop down, but I think the arrow is, um, is better because it just goes right to the next page. And it's several pages long. So you're just going to click, click, click on the different things that you want. Um, and Then you're going to click on OK. And they will show up right here on your sheet. OK. So um, then you're going to have a drop down um, and a selection box for Project Lead the Way. So again, that's optional. But if you want to take one of those courses, you can, but you do not have to. Um, the last thing you're going to choose is your alternate requests. So alternates are a backup plan 
for your first choice electives. So you're gonna first choose all your classes, the electives that you want to take, um, that you have an interest in, and then you are going to go into alternates and you're gonna choose other ones, okay? Other classes that if you chose Art Foundations and you didn't get it, what would you wanna take in its place? Maybe you wanna take Impact, okay? Um, so you need to think about um, what you want to take as a backup plan. And you need to be careful with this because um, you may, in fact, get these courses on your schedule. So you want to make sure that you actually would like those courses and you're not just haphazardly selecting courses because you have to pick electives, I mean alternates. So, um, so let's click on the alternates. And then I'm going to select... I'm going to select mythology and gothic lit and journalism, okay, and literature of diversity. Those are my, my alternates. Um, you do need to pick between four and eight alternates, okay, um, just in case. And then you can rank your choices in order of preference. So if journalism is out of this four, if journalism is your top choice, then you would want to rank that number one. So I'm going to scroll over journalism and I'm going to scroll to alternate priority and I'm going to change it from zero to one. And then mythology is my second choice. So I'm going to change that to two. And then get gothic and horror lit is my third and literature of diversity is my fourth, okay? So one, two, three, four, um, that's the order that I would want prefer to get those classes in. And then I'm gonna select okay. So now I have my alternates in here. So again, go up to the top. At this point, my credits have changed. I now have 25 credits. I still need 15 more. So I'm not done with course selection yet. So I need to go back and see what I'm missing. So please make sure that that tallies up to 40 credits. If you have any questions or concerns, um, you can write notes to your counselor um, right here in the notes for counselor section. So let's say that there's a course that you had heard about from a friend at the high school, but you don't see it on the course selection sheet here, you can type in a note to your counselor. So I you know, can't find the arts class, okay, and so on and so forth. And then you can, that will send to your counselor, okay? and we will be able to um, assist you with that. We'll send you an email or Ms. Foley or Ms. Moriarty will meet with you, um, but we'll, we'll um, get to the bottom of it, okay? So when you're done and you have 40 credits there and you're done with everything, you've got your alternates, you don't need a note to the counselor or you do and you typed it out, then you're gonna click on post right here. Now, if you don't click on the post, don't worry. Everything will save, okay? Um, I'm not even sure what the post button's for because honestly, everything saves um, on its own anyway. So, um, but you know, if it makes you feel better, absolutely click on post um, before leaving the screen, okay? Um, if you are working on your schedule, and you post you post it, um, and your parents um, or guardians they want to um, you know just review it with you, and then as they're reviewing it with you, and they see oh you know what um, honey I, I want you to take um, honors algebra and or, or something like that instead, then you can certainly go in and change your selections while the portal is still open. And the portal is open through Sunday, March 21st at midnight. So everybody needs to have all of these selections in by March 21st at midnight. Okay. So that's pretty much it for um, choosing your courses. 
Um, please remember 40 credits, four to eight alternates. Um, please see your counselor, whether in, in person or you email them, um, give them a call, okay? Um, to, you know, with any questions or concerns that you have. And um, your counselor will be happy to help you or they can con contact us at the high school. Um, but please take care in choosing your courses because you, you don't want to be sitting in a class that you did not want to take and you're not interested in. Um, so that's, that's our piece of advice for you. Um, and we hope that you guys enjoy this process and that you're looking forward to coming up to the brand new Middleborough High School next year. We're all excited about that. And, um, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for your time today and, um, and best of luck with the rest of the year. Take care.